Hey guys, and welcome back to Welcome to Not Included. Clay's amazing space colony simulator extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and we are in the LZ Alpha, taking 11 duplicates way, way into the future at cycle 661 so far. Last time we were working on this poke shell. Well, this was one of the things that we were working on a poke shell farm, where we have a poke shell in a nice little farming uh, farming station here. Pretty standard stuff, but the thing we're doing to try to feed it is feed it millwood but every now and then captain subs goes to take it into the wrong place it's not calling captain dr captain subs out there is a little unfair because there are a lot of people doing so but what we're trying to do is to rot this food down inside because the poke shell if we have a click over there it is polluted dot polluted dirt and rot uh, and these turn into that but they're not stored in there so hopefully it'll just drop it on the floor the poke shell will eat it but the next thing we are also working on as has been the theme for a couple of episodes now is this thing down here as you can see, it's now starting to turn over pretty well. It's not quite got to the point where it's uh, got got the cool coming through on the left hand side but this one turning over nicely what I want to do is actually try and bring this temperature down a little bit because I want to start thinking about these pipes down here I think we could use these pipes here and a little bit of a liquid bridge to come up and start putting some of the heat into this system to try and cool this area down now to think about that I think the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a mechanicized airlock me mechanicized airlock I can I can really speak today mechanicized airlock and we are going to do one of these we of course are working on a heat lock if I come up towards my natural gas generator just above the base you can see that we have this uh, system set up underneath here whereas this uh, thermo sensor will tell us whether it's too hot if it is too hot these doors will slam shut these doors will slam shut then open creating a vacuum inside and a thermal lock that's the type of thing I want to do down below we will have the thermal temperature sensor on this side making sure that this is nice and cool if it's too hot this door will slam shut uh, making a, a, a vacuum lock and allowing this area over here to get cooled by the steam turbines above but I feel like we've got a lot of things we need to do before we can make that so the first thing I'm gonna do is hit pause because look at all of this stuff here so I want to come into this uh, manual airlock I want to shut this as the highest priority possible and I also want to stop people trying to go through here for the moment until we can deal with this okay let's hopefully yeah yeah there we go uh, that's gonna deal with that and now hopefully as we sit here and watch it the uh, the temperature should they sorry the pressure should be dealt with stuff maybe I actually wanted to leave this open but just not let people through that yeah we'll, we'll, go, we'll do it this way instead we'll have this open uh, and not let people through and hopefully all the steam slash sour gas it's the sour gas we're really trying to deal with will get sucked into this vacuum creator over here uh, and and destroyed that's that's what we're after destruction Oh no! Oh no! How did this just happen? All right, we had a, a section of fossil break underneath. I'm not sure exactly how it happened. I'm not even sure what we've got here. Okay, we got some igneous rock. Let's go ahead and insulate that tile. Igneous rock, go, go. With this one being the super high priority. Hopefully, that's just going to instantly. Hey, miss, miss, miss. Could you move over here and maybe get on with? this underneath have you yep yep they're right brilliant okay so this should hopefully stop this massive leaking situation that we've got here uh i'm not even sure how that happened honestly not not sure at all over pressure obviously i mean you can't melt it until you get up to 1300 and we're definitely not up that high we're, we're a clear thousand degrees less than that well that's slightly annoying because people have gone through this top lock here to go and fix these doors you know at, at my recommendation we've let a whole bunch of sour gas into here so we're gonna have to let this just sit for a little bit and clear through with this destructinator over here it probably really is time that we start thinking about how to deal with all this sour gas here every time someone goes in and out we let a whole bunch of stuff out and into here but i've noticed that we're down to less than 10 grams down here of sour gas so i'm going to put this on open i'm going to ask someone to come along and do it at the highest priority luna of course coming from the other side of the base that's cool i'm just going to put it back onto nine so that she can come down and do it without the mild panic breaking out turns out nobody ah because the door got shut all right we're gonna have to leave that on that of course and then i'm gonna allow people to walk through we're gonna start tidying this area up. more importantly we're gonna move the liquid vent over to this side over here so that it's dropping the, the the water clean onto this thermo aqua tuna which i believe to be the main source of heat in this current situation so that should work out pretty well for us okay so miss has very uh, very helpfully come along and changed the state of this door 
which means we should be able to now do this and hopefully get all of this stuff down here picked up and get this liquid vent um, re removed to a different area so that we can be uh, a little a little more convenient than trying to drop water everywhere. I'm going to have a look at the F4. We're going to see what's going to happen with this sour gas. I'm a little bit worried that it's going to end up squeezing in down here. No, thankfully, the amount of steam in here ended up compressing the sour gas down into a single unit. So I'm kind of about that, actually, now that you mention it. Whilst we're here, this liquid vent, let's deconstruct it. It looks like this liquid vent is going to get made. So if I press the F6 and watch where it's going to go. All right, beautiful. And then this one should, over here should get destroyed. Let's Let's do it. Let's do it. This will be amazing. All right. Great. I am uh, totally uh, about that. And now let's see if any of this water actually ends up being turned into actual water or whether it all flashes into steam as soon as we look at it. It looks like it all flashes into steam as soon as we look at it. And that is great because that is what I wanted. One thing I'm going to do now that this is turning over as well as it has, in fact, on this side, you can see it is down underneath 90. I'm going to put this back down to 85. It's only got to drop one more degree to be super, super helpful. Uh, we seem to have a little bit of a problem. I think, actually, we don't have enough steam down here. It seems to be a problem. Yeah, we've only got like hundreds of grams over here as opposed to the kilograms on this side. Maybe we need to drop more water in there. And we know that this can become a problem, but I think we can handle it. Indeed, if we take the water from up here try and bring it down over this way yeah yeah let's do that let's do that let's go b i'm gonna drag this all the way across the bottom here yeah and we're gonna go into these tiles down like so i can definitely see problems coming from that but we'll just uh we'll just hope and pray that it doesn't happen and we'll turn that around like that if we can get the priorities up on the pipe as opposed to the bridge then it should be nice and easy to not let in too much heat and then that bridge will be just last second slam it all down and then rip it back out afterwards now, that's interesting. I thought this was all made out of igneous rock. In fact, it's all made out of sedimentary rock. I don't know if you find that interesting, but I find that interesting because I was going around and I was thinking most of these was made out of insulated, uh, not insulated, made out of igneous rock. Because if we go and have a look here, you can see that out of the various different settings that we've got, if we come across to igneous, you can see that it is slow heating and the overheat temperature is high. So I like to make all of my insulated pipes, tiles, etc., out of that stuff. Not, not that it really matters. I don't, I don't think the sedimentary rock is gonna part. Uh, is gonna cause too much of a drastic heat change. Oh, look at this. Beautiful. We've got to the point where both of these steam turbines are now turning over. I'm a little bit worried about what the temperature is going to be. Is this now raising up? I'm, I'm kind of hoping so, if I'm to be honest with you, because I want these two to fight against the Thermo Aqua Tuna. I don't want to end up having the Thermo Aqua Tuna just chilling everything down to the point where we freeze the petroleum, because that, that would be pretty bad, yo. Uh, well, they might very well both be turning on, but the lack of steam is holding them back in a big way by the looks of it. Yeah, look, we keep pulling a vacuum underneath here. We, we need more steam. We need a lot more steam. Okay, one of the next things I want to do is start deconstructing these tiles above these doors because they're not the, uh, the most insulating. As you can see, their thermal conductivity is almost as good as any liquid we have out there. Uh, so I want to try and rip these out and replace them with insulated tiles. And maybe we'll turn this area up here into our control unit we want to put a thermo sensor over this side maybe even on this side uh, and then have this door open and shut in uh, depending on what the temperature of the liquid is maybe even have some sort of and gate set up so we can take a temperature from here and from here i don't know exactly how we're going to do that but i think it's going to be wonderful Oh no! Oh, Frank came down and did this at the wrong time. Okay, we gotta watch the temperature of it. It's already massively climbing. Alright, that liquid bridge there. I am going to destroy this uh, at a high priority and we will put it back in a little bit. Okay, yeah, that will do for now. K9, if you don't mind, we'll pick all of those up. Uh, right, we get out of there, Frank, and build the rest of the rest of the tube. Well, I'm a little bit worried, actually, now that I come and mention it, that these guys can't get through this door. It does appear to have a little bit of a... Um, uh, a blocking situation on the on the go at the moment, so I'm just gonna just gonna rip the door down. We've got ourselves a little bit of copper. That's cool. That's cool. But more importantly, are we gonna get ourselves uh, access to the pipe? Because that's that's what we need. That's what we want. Uh, it looks like maybe if Mad Frank comes along and oh, doesn't do this one down below, it might very well be the case. Let's have a look at this. It says it's an unreachable. Ah, ah, I see the problem that I did not see beforehand. Oh, maybe destroying that door was completely useless <laughs> oh 
Oh, how long has that sporchid seed been there? What do we do with a sporchid seed? It's just led there. Thankfully, it is not giving out the uh, the, the, the zombie spores. But, oh, it's a little bit deadly. I'm watching it. I've turned on a whole bunch of priorities over here to get the uh, pipe down put as quick as possible. But the uh, mist decided to come down and work on these insulated pipes. And I was a little bit worried that we would have some of the liquid spill out. And it turns out not. But we got this sporchid seed. And really, I'd like, yeah, compost it. Let's, let's, let's just get rid of it. It strikes me as a, as a very dangerous thing to have laying around. Okay, talking of very dangerous to have around, it is time to put this liquid bridge back down. We're going to turn it around this way. We're going to pop it down like that. I'm going to grab the liquid bridge and say, hey, highest priority possible. Mimi should suddenly be on it. She needs to go and grab some materials for it. Beautiful, just outside. Going to come down and start filling this in. And I'm honestly wondering about how full we want to allow this to actually get. I feel like it needs to be quite full. Jelly has decided to take over. I wonder what Mimi suddenly had to go and do. But yeah, I am uh, thinking we're going to let it get quite full. It might even have to run overnight, looking at the way that maybe we're about to have overnight cooled. But that, that should be fine. That should be fine. That will give uh, time for things to fill up. Maybe to the point where the liquid vent gets overfilled. I'm not entirely certain. I would like to know. Okay, let's turn that back down to a one. Well, five then. That's fine. We've got deconstruct errand. Uh, and we're just, we're just waiting, basically. We're just waiting. Wait, 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 wait. Talking about just waiting. Yeah, the water's on its way down. That's cool. That's cool. Mad Frank Missile Line, number 15 on destroying that. It's going to take some time for the match to be able to deal, deal with that. And I don't know whether, whether we're going to be able to get them down here to uh, to deal with it in the morning or not. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. It'll be great. It will be great. Let's, uh, let's speed up time and let this water flow. Because, of course, it's going to take a lot of time for the water to get down towards the liquid bridge. I'm a little bit worried that maybe the liquid bridge is already starting to pump through ridiculous heats. We're up to 60. That's that's all right. The only the, the maximum temperature it can push out is 250, though. So I suspect, actually, what will happen is it will equalize the temperatures. And these guys will start having to try and figure out how to bring the temperature down enough. Okay, we definitely got enough in here now i want this to be super high priority i want to know what the uh the the schedule says do i do this all right mimi's on it beautiful beautiful i i hit red alert and i turned it back off and now mimi should be running her no no she's like no i'm sleeping don't don't do that but that's fine because morning was just around the corner and we've still got it on the highest priority. So let's see. Forrest is on his way down. That's pretty good because Forrest is a very fast boy. Yeah, look at this. Look how fast he is getting down here. I literally cannot scroll the screen quick enough to keep up with him sometimes. So I am uh, pretty happy about how that went. Beautiful. And now we've got um, 50 kilograms of steam in here. It's going to be pretty deadly to open that door. Let's not do that. <laughs> Apart from, of course, I do still want to do that. Uh, I need to get in there and start working on some other things to move the steam around. But right now, I think we're good just to leave this for a little bit and see if it self-regulates well. What I'm mostly worried about is the petroleum coming out of this side of the thermal aqua tuna getting too cold. One thing I have been noticing overnight is the steam is slowly starting to drop below the 200 degree mark. Now, this is a little bit of a shame because up here, these guys require the steam to be about 250, uh, about 200, sorry. They will work above 150, but uh, require 200 to be working pretty well. So I think what I'm going to do is start passing this petroleum up and through here. Now, the majority of these are actually insulated pipe, but this one down the end here, this is a radiant pipe. In fact, I'm going to go that way, uh, and I will even use my insulated pipe here to bring that down and connect it up and then we're going to have a nice little system set up where it's going to get exposed to the crude oil here if i might even like replace this one with a radiant pipe it's going to get exposed to the crude oil here and it's going to is that not unreachable why not because i haven't allowed this yet uh it's going to suck up all the heat from here, dump it into this area. Hopefully the steam turbines are going to cool that down. And this should slowly start making its way towards about the 200 degree mark. Once we got it down to 200 degrees, uh, maybe we actually want to use this little chamber here as a secondary cooling area. Because we need to try and get it down below 100, really. Let's be honest, ideally. Uh, so maybe we need some sort of uh, secondary system over here that condenses water. I'm not sure how we're going to do that, but we'll figure it out. Okay, all of the builds outside this area have been done. And I've gone and sw switched 
my priorities to just construction and ask them at the super highest of priorities to come along and build this stuff down here. I'm now hoping this means that everybody is running their way over. Missaline seems to be mostly on it, but of course Luna, Forest. Where's Mad Frank at him during all of this? But these guys are the ones that we really want to be getting down. Frankie boy, where are you going, my friend? I, I just don't know what you're up to sometimes. I presume you're going to get supplies rather than going anywhere specifically important. No, got a, bit, a little bit of iron from there. Okay, so where, where are the peeps? What's going on? Why, why aren't they, like, right here? Okay, here's Miss. This is beautiful. Hopefully she's going to make her way down. Particularly watching out for what happens with the amount of steam in here. She climbs down. The door should shut down behind her. Uh, and that way, the steam has got per positive pressure going that way, which is uh, useful, as I'm sure you can imagine, for keeping all the sour gas out, even though there is a little bit of... Oh, there was a little bit of sour gas in here, and now it's not. We've just got phosphorus, which uh, I'm all right with, actually. I'm all right. So, Miss should hopefully be getting these builds done. No, nope, turns out that Luna's going to be the one that does this. Uh, no, no. In fact, she's proved me wrong by going to pick up a bit of iron that's just outside the door and going to fix it via this ref method. Forrest doing a, di a build, and hopefully Miss should also be doing a build. Everybody who is locked in here is going to end up doing a build because, of course, we're going to end up getting locked in here. Where's me, me? You're all the way over there. It's going to take you a little bit of time. Let's wait. All right, Luna ended up stealing the job. No biggie, though. So now that we go and slam this last one in, if I press S F6, we should start to watch all of this patrol spin around is uh, dropping off 300 degrees here. I'm a little bit worried that it's just going to get too hot too quickly, but we'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep an eye on it. Because obviously if all else fails, we just break one of these and let the heat dissipate out. Oh, I've just noticed we are in cycle 666 as we're working down in hell. I, I think that's quite nice, actually, if you ask me. I've set up a uh, delay system for this middle door, as I was speaking about. You can see we've got a thermo sensor over here. Tells us what temperature everything is. Uh, that's just directly connected to these outside doors. If it's too hot, shut the outside doors. And then this sort of reversing system comes through to slam down and open the doors. Hmm, hmm, hmm. The more I'm thinking about it, the more I think I've got this slightly set up wrong. What I'm thinking we need is this loop over here that's taking the temperature straight from the crude oil to come up and into this zone over here. Then we need this petroleum, which is coming through at less than 70 degrees, to cool down this area over here. So we have a two-stage cooling process to bring it down to temperature. I think that would be a much, much better way of doing it. But we are here right now, so I'm just going to destroy what's in my way. Way and uh, we'll we'll think about how to move this over here at some point. I mean, it's going to be nice and simple. We have a loop down here and a loop up here, right? That that should be relatively easy. And then we'll destroy all this and maybe pull this what this uh, radiation pipe here out and over this way. Uh, and then we'll have another one of these setups in the middle. Incidentally, building the uh, the setup for this, the biggest tip I have learned for trying to build any sort of automated do door system is to not let these bottom ones connect uh, until you've got everything else in place. Uh, else you end up with a situation where the doors lock behind you because they don't have a signal coming in just like this one over here if you can have a look all these don't have anything hooked up to the wire and that means that the people can't get through there so trust put those last bits of wire in afterwards Forest actually has enough carrying capacity to be able to do uh, all of the de these deliveries at once, which I think is absolutely amazing. I don't think he managed to get through into this wire bridge. I'm not sure who's going to be on that. Turns out nobody. Not not quite what I expected, but, you know, I'm sure these duplicates have a plan amongst themselves. But also, wow, it's noisy in that close. Let's just roll out a little bit. Okay, so now that we've got all the individual pieces in place, we kind of have to go through and put these last wires in uh, one at a time, working from the back forwards. But we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. You know, we're getting quite the vacuum over here as we're chilling down all this molten lead in here. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. But also, somehow, not overheating everything in here. So I am all about that. We um, seem to have hit a bit of a power conundrum, though, and this is now all starting to heat up. This should be able to turn over, but of course we've disabled it by the automatic grid I mean that that's fine I mean how if we just say under 95 yeah we definitely we need this to keep turning over badly <laughs> Oh, maybe the temperature is climbing a little uncontrollably. Having a look around, I've got to be honest, I'm a little worried about our poke shell over here. You can see he's down to 336 calories and looking in the fridge, nothing's really ready to to rot down yet. I'm a little bit worried that people are taking all of the stuff over to this composter over here. Maybe we want to turn this right down and think about how we can get stuff dropped off over here. I'm not entirely certain. This might mean that we uh, uproot another millwood and think about 
how to get a storage bin in here. Looking in, it's the compostable. No, that's the sporched seed. What about where's where's polluted dirt? It's gonna be in here somewhere. Organic. That's where we're at. Okay, we can we can do that. We can do that. Let's catch a copy of this. Hi, Miss. How are you doing? Thank you very much for building. Well, ripping down this particular unit here. We'll pop that down and we'll wait for someone to build that. And uh, hopefully we can start moving some rock piles over there. Down here, the temperature has climbed by a steady two degrees. Oh, or maybe now even up to three degrees. 2.30 is quite a lot. We're going to have to start thinking about how to... Oh, <laughs> Frank's just kind of dug himself in here. But we're going to have to think about how we can start regulating this uh, this temperature flow here rather than just letting it flow no matter what it wants to do. But let's uh, connect this next wire up. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, looks like the entire system has been put into place. So let's get this thermo center and pretend that we're going for a temperature under 400 degrees. Below 400 degrees should open all the doors. Yes, beautiful. That allows the uh, both liquids and temperature to flow. But actually, really what we're after is under 200. So if we hit that, this should now sl slam all the doors down. And then slightly afterwards, uh, this should now open, leaving a firmly insulated space in between we can hope we can hope I mean, it does already look like it's bringing the temperature down so I i'm about that i'm about that well i suppose the plan now is just wait and see if everything melts this overheats at 325 we don't quite have that temperature down here oh, sorry we are just a little bit over that temperature down here and i'm wondering whether that means that with the uh with the steam turbine turning over we won't quite get to, to melting temperature i'm hoping so we've got 100 degrees to see how well it will work out so uh yeah let's let's just wait and see how it works shall we one of the other things i'd like to do really is then reconnect up all of this lot but i don't know whether that is a smart smart plan right now so I think the area that's going to tell me whether this is a success or not is in fact this bit of pipe that comes out here. This tells us what temperature the crude oil or petroleum or whatever it is we've got in this pipe leaves the cooling system at and it is slowly but surely working its way 0.1 of a degree down each time. The reason that I decided to have a look at this is if we have a look in the molten lead, 327.5 is the degree that it uh, starts uh, solidifying again and as you can see 329 is the temperature that the liquids are coming out at. So we we are very close and pushing in the right direction to cool it down. So that's great. As you can see, 328.7 now is what's coming out. That has gone down by 0.2 degrees, 0.3, you know, mate. It's, it's a small amount, but the point is, it's going down. Okay, this is working incredibly well, like incredibly, incredibly well. I'm surprised at how well it's working, but I would like to change the situation ever so slightly. I'm going to grab a copy of this uh, bridge over here. I'm going to stick one on that side and stick one on this side over here. Even then, I've done that. I'm not sure that's exactly where I want it to go. I'm going to get a bit of insulated pipe, and then I'm going to grab some radiated pipe and go up, across. You know what? We're going to go all the way up and like that. This should... Um, I'm not sure if it's going to end up dumping too much heat in. As you can see, we've only got two bits of radiative pipe here, but one, two, three, four, five, and then six. It, it might get a little much. It might get a lot much. And I'm going to bring down some insulated pipe underneath here, then get a bunch of radiated pipe and try and pick up a bunch of heat. And we're going to end up cooling this side down before we end up cooling this side down, because I want to then use the temperature of this thermo aqua tuner cooling loop to cool down this side so hopefully we can get some sort of gradient on the go maybe put in another one of these um thermally isolating door systems here uh, and we should be able to then get it cooling down to 200 degrees or so with the uh the balanced out with the steam and then get it down here to about 70 degrees would be ideal before we then pump it up and out of here uh off to our power factory is where we're actually going to use it oh we've run into a situation where this one has dropped into dormancy which means someone needs to come along and help pump out the very last of the natural gas but now we've got like one being dormant i think maybe this one over here oh no this is being nice and uh, nice and erupting but we're having trouble cooling down the contents enough and then over here well, our steam has fired back up okay this is this is beautiful this is beautiful let's go check this gas geyser over here dormant that's a bit of a shame and do we have one more no that was that was all of them dormant dormant two firing over there hmm 
So a big question I have right now is whether I can change this system up. If we have a look, we're currently pumping hydrogen down into the water down here to try and extract the temperature out of it. I'm wondering whether we can replace this with a liquid circulating system and then have this hydrogen pumping up into this uh, gas line over here to uh, make this a little bit more robust. And then we could pass the liquid up and through just this cold chamber here, maybe pass the actual thermal aqua tuna, uh, thermal nullifier sorry itself yeah I, th I think this is something we're gonna have to work on quietly in the background of course one of the things we're gonna have to change is to put this above maybe and hold that door open uh, this is gonna let a lot of heat come in here that we have just dissipated away I don't like the way this will change then did you see that um, but that's to allow this bunch of piping to get put in place and in fact I would like it super high priority if we can Oh, this is, this is putting so much heat back into the system. It, it's painful. It's very painful. All right, come on, guys. Let's get this done. Maybe even at a higher priority than that. Okay, so I lost my nerve and only put two pipes of radianceness out there. Uh, I'm also going to do something very, very important. We need to do that and turn that onto the most highest priority possible. Turn that thermo center back into a situation where it's going to let uh, th temperatures through. It's a bit of a shame because we've got a temperature of 350 on this side and 380 on the other. So we'd set up quite a good gradient, but I really want to move this over this way. So to do that, I'm going to make sure that I'm not melting any pipes by having the wrong pipes in place. They're all iron, aren't they not? Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, just waiting for, here we come, Mad Frank. I should imagine uh, Luna and Misaligned and probably uh, Forest are going to come along and help out with this particular job. We just want to steal all the petroleum from this loop and put it over in this loop here, uh, which will happen eventually as soon as we get all the equipment down here. Where are people going? Okay, beautiful. Mad Frank came along, did the last build for us, and now hopefully this is going to go through. Oh, the next thing we want to do, put that back to below. That should shut the door down, making another nice thermal barrier. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, and, and now we've got to see if this is going to overheat everything. I, I feel like it might, but we'll see. We've got we've got steam uh, going into the steam, sorry, rather than into the uh, crude oil down here, in the uh, vain hope that maybe it will stop the thermal my aqua tuna from overheating too fast okay looks like we actually got all of the petroleum almost all the petroleum okay this is good this is good i'm gonna just leave it like that now because that's pretty much all we need to do uh it's coming out of 300 degrees though that's it's pretty pretty toasty pretty toasty Okay, this steam turbine has just fired up as it's dropped below temperature. Oh, and then turned back off. But I wanted to see whether it was doing wonders for the steam. And it looks like it might be, actually. I've been watching this overnight. I think we have made a totally the correct decision. The uh, insulated pipe contains 10 kilograms of petroleum at 325. It's just dropped down to 324. It keeps going down. Uh, very rarely jumps back up to 325. But that's just singular little bits of petroleum that are hot. The, the main trend is that we are heading downwards and I am loving it. With some gentle prodding, we got all of the duplicates to come along and put this liquid pipe in place. But of course, we need to try and move some actual liquids down into it. Now, I'm looking at this ethanol here, and I would really like to get this involved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through and dig a couple of tiles out from here. I'm going to see if we can do it like this. I really doubt it. I've got a feeling the moment we start coming into it... Uh, let's do it like this, okay? I've made a little bit of a deeper hole here. So hopefully, as we approach it, we won't let the, uh, let the ethanol spill over. And I'd like to move it down and into this loop which shouldn't be too difficult at the moment i start to get some of that into there oh look we can make a bridge jump over there no it's it's going to be a little bit more awkward than i thought maybe we'll put down a line down here and then fill it back in with blocks afterwards that should be fine but of course the big trouble is going to be dealing with this a bit down here once we've started getting a few liquids into place or at least got ourselves into a situation where we can start putting a few liquids into place uh we'll probably also want to move down or uh, this ethanol over here but yeah, once we do that, we are going to have to open this door, slam everything down with a emergency priority and see if we can't get this running properly without hopefully cooking this liquid pump because it gets, it gets quite warm back here. Something weird's happened. We've got people inside with uh, with atmosphere suits on. One, two, three. Yeah, that somehow people have gone around the wrong way. We'll have to try and figure out why. 
Okay, it took a little bit longer than I would like to, but we finally got some ethanol flowing down to this line here. This means moment of panic has arrived. I'm going to put everything by on this door on panic stations. I'm then going to get this uh, thermo sensor down here. And I'm going to go, if it's above 20 degrees, because it's always above 20 degrees, please do open this door. Now, this door is going to now flood through a whole bunch of water that I hope is not too hot. As you can see, the temperature is rising, but I hope we're not going to hit above the 75 degrees that would be needed to start melting this pump uh, and it looks like everything is working out way okay in here this is very good very good maybe we'd like to uh, do one of those as well just kind of pick up everything that is out there mad frank has found himself a little bit of a dig over there i didn't even know that was a thing that was going on all right that's good what about the uh, the pipes though they're really the ones that we want to have put together if we can it looks like a few people are doing stuff on that front uh, and we are working towards it nice 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 how is the liquid going up here. No, I didn't put it the wrong way around. Why is it not flowing? I don't know. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. It just happened to look at exactly the wrong moment. Good work. Good work. Okay, with all that done, I'm now going to go back to below 20. The door should now shut closed. Uh, right, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And then the next thing we get to see is what happens to this coming through here. It's about 11 degrees for now. Uh, let's, let's pick it up the pace. I wonder whether we need to stop this at any point. Uh, at some point, it will just be a completely full loop and then it will carry on turning around thanks to the power of this bridge I, I believe I believe okay so we have picked up 17 degrees or so on our way past okay that's that's fine the next big question of course is whether we lose all that temperature on the way through here so let's let's watch this we come in at 17 degrees and what are we going to leave at uh, hopefully it's something closer to zero uh, 100 uh, minus 101 or 111 or something like that is the mine, uh, the smallest we can take. Okay, so that's that's going through pretty well, actually. That is going through pretty well. Do we want more ethanol? Doesn't matter if we want it or not. Here it comes. Uh, okay, let's uh, deconstruct all of that. Actually, no, 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 no. Ignore my crazy talk. Let's not destruct all of that. Let's try and figure out how to get it up here, right? I know we run this base on far, far too much hope, but hopefully this will uh, dump all of this in the, all the ethanol in our ethanol tank over here and not overflow. That's my big worry is the overflow. I was a little bit worried about overwhelming the liquids, but watching this uh, change its temperature, may maybe we need a lot more radiant pipe on this side. Okay, all right, let, let's figure this out. Let's figure this out. We're going to uh, open this again, and we're going to once again put this on super high priority, and hopefully we're not going to destroy a bunch of stuff or drop a, load, a whole load of ethanol that ends up filling our pump and breaking our desalinator. That That's the big, big, big worry there. Okay, here comes Mad Frank. I've got a feeling he's going to do the thing that we don't want him to do. Okay, any ethanol there? There's a bit of ethanol there. We can mop it up, though, so that's pretty good. Now we're just waiting for someone to come along and finish off the rest of this piping for for us. All right, that's that entire system in place. Let's put that below and wait to see if we can change that back into a lovely system that keeps this nice and cool. Okay, it's backflowed quite enough. Uh, I want to press F6 and see what this is coming out at because it's going to be quite high, right? Okay, it comes out at 30 odd. I'm down with that. All people must be working on. Oh, you can feel the, the, the line being put into place up here. This is the line that we're going to use to uh, put the ethanol back. So I now think uh, running all this liquid through here and then up past our thermal nullifier might be technically known as a um, mistake. Yeah, that's right. The big problem that we've got here is that this just cannot deal with the amount of heat that is being produced. 80,000... Uh, Duplicate thermal units, I presume that's what it's supposed to be. 80,000 units sounds like a lot, but with this constantly, just constantly pumping extra heat in, I, I don't think we can actually over, overcome it. We are currently, let's have a look here, not fully saturating the ethanol with heat. As you can see, it's going in at 40 degrees and it's coming out at 50. Now, the temperature of the water is 60 degrees. So, um, yeah, that, that's a thing. But even when it goes in here, you can see it goes into the system at 53 and it is coming out out of 47 but actually what's happening is we're warming up all the hydrogen in here into quite an unbearable temperature whilst it goes off to cool down the 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 power units over here it should actually be okay but i'm uh i'm worried i gotta be honest with you i am actually worried about how good this is gonna be uh as i say we've only got to get below 70 here but it's still it's a higher temperature than i would like Okay, after a little bit of experimentation, I have got a hydro sensor set here turned on to the 
smallest I could put in there. 0. Uh, 0. 0.1. I couldn't even put 0. 0.01 in. It decided to just call that 0. Uh, that's then hooked up to this mechanicized airlock, or mechanical as I'm going to call them from now on. Mechanical airlock. Uh, when this, when water or any liquid touches this, it slams that door down, thus making this into a liquid tight unit down here. That's beautiful and it should work wonders. Let's have a quick look and see how long we've got. 32 cycles. Oh my gosh. So as I was saying earlier, this may have been a little bit of a mistake hooking up this ethanol to this system like this, but the way we've got it set up here wouldn't actually be too hard to set up another steam turbine here and maybe uh, set up a cooling loop for this little unit right down here. Talking of cooling loops down here, we have got this turning over quite well. I don't think we're in too much da danger, but 242 is a lot higher than I like to see it. Uncomfortably close uh, to 300. Let's see. We can go up to 325, though, so that should be good. And with that, I am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you guys next time. We're probably going to work on that cooling unit for the water over there to try and, try and save the ethanol. Ethanol, by far the best cooling liquid, by the way. And hopefully we will get to the point where we can actually pass the cooling from the thermal aqua tuners unit here, this cooled stuff here, out and through this unit. Put, put a divide down, pump all the uh, petroleum out. Bob's your uncle, got yourself a power source, right? That That's my idea, but I'll see you then when we're going to do that. Bye.